Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today we're going to talk about vibrating jig trailers. I think there's a lot of science that goes into this. And a lot of anglers, unfortunately, I think just slap one trailer on and they think they're good to go for every situation. The reality is there are trailers that can enhance your vibrating jigs motion. There are trailers that can limit the darting action of your vibrating jigs. And therefore, I think it's important to understand what trailers are the right ones. So I want to walk you through the ones that I like to use so that you get a feel for when I think a trailer is good, when I think a trailer is bad. Uh, the first thing I want to point out with trailers is I generally do not ever go with some sort of flapping trailer, you know, like a big craw bait like this. The reason for that is the more appendages, the more flapping motion, the more it creates drag for your bait in the water, and therefore it really limits your darting motion. I'll challenge you guys. Go out, put a big, a big craw flapping trailer on your bait, and compare the darting motion to that versus a straight-tailed trailer of some form. And you'll see, you'll really determine that there is a lot more darting erratic motion with a bait that doesn't have big flappers on it. Now, I'm not saying there's not ever a time and place for that. If I'm fishing extremely muddy water, I sometimes want those big flappers because I'm trying to create a lot of motion. I'm trying to limit my bait from moving because the reality is in dark, muddy water, if you've got a bait that's just all over the place, it may trigger strikes from fish, but you're probably going to end up having a lot of missed strikes. And therefore, if I'm really fishing muddy, muddy water, I may want that big like flapper motion to, to keep my bait in the same place and put out as much vibration to attract the fish to my bait to help them find it so that they can actually eat it. But having said that, that's very rare for me. When I'm talking muddy water, I'm talking muddy water where you've got pretty much no visibility at all. Uh, so let's get into the baits that I like to use. Uh, the first one is probably the most standard. You know, a lot of people like to throw uh, the Yamamoto Zeiko, and which is a good trailer. I've done really good with that. But I got to tell you, I do really like this Berkeley Powerbait Power Stinger, which they came out with this past year. You know, I did some side-by-side -side comparison videos, and I really feel like this bait has more tail motion. So it does not limit you in terms of the erratic darting motion, but you have more side-to-side -side motion out of the tail. So I've had really good success with this. I've done several videos of using the Power Stinger. So this is kind of a standard go-to trailer for me uh, when it comes to just kind of normal conditions. If I'm fishing water clarity, that's relatively clear, anywhere from probably a foot and a half to as clear as it can get. Uh, it's a good standard trailer that really enhances the motion and the movement of your vibrating jig. So that's a good standard one. That's kind of, you know, that straight tailed minnow look is something that we see a lot of people using for their trailers. And there's good reason for that. They work really well, but those aren't the only type of trailers that you should use. One of my favorites, and this is something that uh, is starting to really catch on, I'm starting to see it pop up, is to use a soft stick bait. You know, I really feel like a soft stick bait gives your vibrating jig a very cool motion. When this thing comes through the water, the tail is just going like that. And it's really, really unique. And it's something that is catching on all over the place. Personally, I like to go with a color that pops on the bait. You know, a lot of times I'm going to be doing this when I'm fishing watercolor that's a little bit off or I'm fishing fish that I know are in like a spawning pre-spawn phase and I want something that's gonna trigger those big females. And I find that if you use a bright colored or if you use uh, a soft stick bait that comes, a lot of times you can get them with a little fire tail tip or a chartreuse tip, that little bit of extra flair can really generate them to go. But uh, I've had a lot of good success this year on this coleslaw colored slobber knocker. And this is a this is an old old Yamamoto methylate colored worm. You can see here, these went out of stock, guys. These went out of stock at a bait shop. I still have the sticker on it. Ninety seven cents. I bought like, I don't know. I probably bought a hundred packs. It was it was this methylate color. It was a solid chartreuse and a solid yellow. And I probably bought a hundred packs. I have a whole wall still full of them. So I use them all the time. I love that color and it really pops on that coleslaw colored slobber knocker. 
but it's something you got to try. If you haven't thrown a soft stick bait on your vibrating jigs yet, you're missing out because it really works extremely well. All right. So like I said, I don't like crawb style trailers that much, but I still like beaver style baits. Uh, in this case, you guys know I love the Maxent Creature Hog by Berkeley. This is the South African Special, one of my all-time all favorite colors. Uh, this is just a great setup to use. If you do want some good kicking motion, you can still get it out of your beaver style baits. So you've got flat tails, which really does a good job at mimicking a bluegill, but still giving off some good motion. The one thing I want to point out, for me, this is when I really like to use this style trailer. If I want my bait to try to get down deeper into the grass, so maybe I'm fishing some stalks and I want a bait that's going to get down, that flat profile, if you rig it so that it's, uh, how do we say this? So it's uh, perpendicular to the surface of the water when it comes through, so you can see it's it's rigged so it's on its side basically. That will let your bait get deeper as you're retrieving it. So if you've got an area you want to get your bait down deeper towards the bottom, I do like to throw a creature hog like that, but I rig it on its side. Now to counter that, the other time I really like to use it is if I'm fishing, sometimes you fish grass that's just a solid mat and it's not like it's right under the surface and you don't want a bait that's gonna dive too far into it because then it just gets snagged. You want a bait that's gonna ride higher. That's when I'll take it and I'll rig it so that it's got the flat bottom is parallel to the surface of the water, just like that. And what that does, that big wide flat bottom helps rise your bait. So as you're retrieving this, it keeps your bait up. So a lot of times if you're fishing really thick cover, really thick grass, and the fish are sitting on top of it or you're trying to draw them out of it, that's when I like to go with the creature hog, but I rig it in a manner to keep my bait up. Uh, that's really the, a big thing for me. You need to recognize, should your trailer be in one position or should it be in another position? You know, it doesn't matter if you're throwing a soft stick bait. You can't, you can't achieve that with a bait like that. And you can't achieve that really with a power stinger either. But if you're looking to keep a bait down or you're looking to keep it rising to the surface or keep it higher up in the water column, making a simple change to the way you rig it makes a big difference. Uh, the other thing I'll say is when it's rigged on its side, it gives off a much better bluegill profile. So I like to do that too, if I know the fish are keen in on bluegills. The last style is simply to go with a boot tail trailer. So I know, you know, this is something that does cause drag in the water, but I do like to use it at times if I'm fishing really dirty water. Uh, so like I said before, if I'm fishing mud, I will put a big craw flapper on, but generally if I'm fishing water that's uh, like got a foot of visibility, so it's dirty, but it's not super, super dirty. A lot of times I will go with a boot tail swim bait. This is the Berkeley Power Swimmer, and I really like these for trailers because they're an extremely tough, tough um, material, so they just stay on your bait really well. You can abuse them and they just hold up great. Uh, but I like the, the flapping tail. Again, it gives off a little bit more vibration, limits my darting motion a little bit of the vibrating jig, and just gives the fish something more to key in on. So I will use a boot-tailed swim bait at times. Uh, again, that's probably, I must say I use a craw 5% of the time, a boot-tail 10% of the time, uh, and then I use probably the creature hog a quarter of the time and the remaining, whatever that is, 80% is probably split. 50% uh, power stinger, 30% to 40% a straight tailed uh, soft stick bait. So guys, you got to try You got to recognize the importance of your trailer selection with your vibrating jigs. It really does make a difference. It can limit or enhance the motion of the bait. Give it a try. Play around with trailers. You might find that you really do prefer some over others in certain scenarios. So it makes a big difference. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, new video coming out tomorrow.